how to program your workout for muscle gain and mass during quarantine. What up guys, the Fighting Therapist here, and before we jump into the video, please give this a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You guys know all that good, good stuff so we can keep growing this channel, I can keep sharing more information. Today is gonna to be a topic that a lot of people have been asking, that I've been seeing a lot of questions on my Instagram, on other people's Instagrams that are sharing a whole bunch of information. And it's going to be how to continue gaining muscle mass, hypertrophy, strength training, while we're on quarantine since there isn't really like a gym and we don't know how to program and a lot of people are just kind of grabbing workouts from other people even myself you probably have grabbed like a workout plan that i posted a hit training that i posted but you're not really you don't have a goal and that's the problem that we have here we need to still have that goal so that we can continue progressively getting stronger and stronger but to break things down we're going to start with a simple form of a workout plan. So this is a little glimpse. I'm going to kind of put it on the whole screen so you guys can see. It's a glimpse of my macro cycle, my meso cycle, and my micro cycles, which pretty much just describes my whole year of training when it comes to fights. Um, the little blocks that can either be four weeks long, six weeks long, up to 12 week long, right? It really depends on like when I have the fights. And then the micro cycles are pretty much those week to week training sessions, whether I was doing a normal standardized progressively overloading it whether i was doing a reverse an undulating program it doesn't really matter about those things but those are just to show you guys how my year looks now usually for myself which i'm going to completely make into another video for fighters and jiu-jitsu athletes a lot of times the base the foundation of any periodized program is pretty much similar for everyone across the board, whether you're an athlete or not. And the purpose of that is to build a stable foundation, a stable base. And usually within that time frame, that can be anywhere between like three months to four months, right? Sometimes football players have like four, five, six months. That's where they're really putting on all that size and gain. They're building a strong foundation. They're building gains They're They're getting nice and strong. And during that time, they're not doing a lot of high volume, sorry, they're not doing really high intensity workouts. Maybe a few sessions here and there, but the base of the workout isn't high intensity. It's actually more volume. You're just doing more and more and more and trying to increase our work capacity. Now, when it comes to work capacity, I made a video on that specifically. You guys could check out right, like, you know, right there. And then when it comes to the difference between volume and intensity and how to kind of put them together and what's the difference between them, I made a video on that too. You guys can check out right here. So check out those videos and then come right back so you can finish because you want to get a base of what those two are and then you could come back and finish this video with me. So now that you came back here and you kind of understand a little bit more or if you've already been following, you know exactly what we're talking about. So like I said completely in the beginning, whether you're an athlete, a weekend warrior, or a day-to-day -day person, the base foundation of the first block of a periodization program is going to be building a strong foundation. So what we're gonna do, all these three different people, is pretty much the same thing. Get stronger, get bigger, work capacity. Make sure that we're able to do more and more and more so that when we go back to our sport, we're able to specialize into what we want when it comes to our goals. Another big thing when it comes to this foundation base and just getting stronger and bigger is it plays a huge factor in injury prevention and a lot of studies, I, my degrees in exercise physiology, health kinesiology and applied physiology, specialty in athletic therapy. A lot of the research when, when it comes to injury prevention has to do with a great foundation of strength of hypertrophy, an athlete that's able to be stronger and develop more musculature and develop more musculature will in the end be able to prevent injuries more. So a lot of times when I was growing up, we're just seeing athletes now when I was taking care of them in sea gyps and everything, a lot of them weren't on a regimented workout plan. It was just a lot of cardio and they weren't doing a lot of extra stuff. So when they came in the clinic to get treated by me, 
they were insanely weak everywhere. Glutes were weak, adductors were weak, abductors were weak, shoulders were weak, rounded shoulders, posterior chain was weak. So being able to get stronger will help you prevent the injuries and it's all over the literature so everyone should be doing that. So to make things super easy for you guys, I designed a plan that I'm gonna put down in the description below. Below. That I put down in the description below so you guys can actually start doing it. And it's pretty much gonna be the same for everyone. Now, the purpose of it is to do the compound lifts, always. We're gonna all do bench, we're all gonna do deadlift, we're all gonna do squats, and we're all gonna do overhead press, along with core work. Now, I made a complete separate video on core, whether for ab progression and for core itself and for exercises you guys should be doing. Please check, check those videos out. I'm gonna put them right here, or I'll put them in the link down below. So there's, there's three parts to that video, so go check that out. This workout for everyone at home, you guys could do it, is gonna be a four week program. If you don't wanna do the fourth day, it's okay. You don't have to, you could do just the three days. But the principle of it is to get the compound lifts in, but then also to get the isolation work in. For me as a principle, I'm the athlete, so I'm building that foundation, but I'm sticking away from the isolation work. That's not my goal. I'm not trying to get like bodybuilder biceps. I don't need that, I'm punching. So I'm doing less of those, but you guys can definitely do more. The sample workout is pretty simple. It follows a structure that I made in the last video, uh, right before this one was, we're gonna do eight to 10 reps on one day, we're gonna do 15 to 20 reps on the second day, and we're gonna do 25 plus reps with um, reps to failure, with blood flow restriction, with, um, with drop sets, everything that's gonna bring us to failure and get as much metabolic stress as possible. That's exactly what we're gonna do. And the other two days, the Monday is really meant for mechanical load, and then the midday is really meant for muscular endurance with a little bit of mechanical load, but then also really getting that mind-muscle connection, contraction throughout our exercises. I know a lot of people are doing HIIT and circuit training. We're gonna try to step away from that, and we're only gonna do that once a week. Now I have a whole bunch of HIIT workouts that you guys can do. I wrote a simple one down there. You don't need to always do that one. The variety that you can do when it comes to sprints, skipping rope, a circuit, like it really varies. So you guys can pick. This is what I put. You guys choose whatever the hell you guys wanna do. And again, I'm gonna link up right here another hit workout that I did so you guys can pretty much choose what you want. You guys are gonna do uh, five to seven days a week of steady state cardio. This is really meant to do either 30 to 60 minutes. It's either gonna be a bike ride, a run, uh, walking even in the sunlight, going out and doing some mobility, some stretching, some foam rolling, doing a lot of prehab, rehab. Now's the time to really take care of yourself and get everything, those aches and pains, get them out of the way and really treat them. And for the steady state, we're still trying to burn fat here, right? So the best time to do it, so when we wake up in the morning, we're gonna do something that's cardio based. We're trying to stick between our steady state rate, which is mean we're trying to pick an intensity for us. It's gonna depend on person to person. I hate following these numbers that are like staying in your fat range zone. And no, it's just, it's wrong and doesn't work. If you wanna do it properly, you're gonna to have to go into an exercise physiology lab, put the mask on you and do the calorimetry test to see what are you off, what are you breathing out? Is it more carbs, is it more fat, depending on the level that you're doing. So it varies from person to person. But for the majority of the time, simple things that you could do is, if you can still talk while doing the exercise, you're pretty much in a steady state pace. That's for me, I can go up to like 150 beats per minute when my resting heart rate's roughly 40. I usually stick to anywhere between 100 to 150. 100 if I'm doing like yoga or something and 150 if I'm doing like my bike rides, my runs and anything like that. Then for the last thing, of course, I was gonna cover it, is gonna be eating. How to eat, what should you do? Should you bulk now, should you cut now, should you maintain now? If you're the day-to-day -day person or the weekend warrior, I highly suggest you guys stick on maintenance calories and or do a mini cut. Now, the reason for this is because we're not gonna be doing that much work, trying to bulk now and being home without having the huge benefit of having mechanical load, for heavy, heavy weightlifting to get those gains. Not really the greatest idea. And personally, I just think that bulking is really stupid and there's no reason to do it. When you look at the majority of the time, if you're gonna bulk, everyone does it wrong. If you're gonna bulk, you're gonna be pretty shredded already and you'll be at roughly anywhere between seven to 8%, right? For men, roughly like 15, 16% for women. And then you would bulk up a couple of percentage. So you would put on maybe five, 10 pounds of 
let's say total weight, right? Muscle and fat, of course. And you would go back up to 12% for men, maybe 20, 21% for women, maybe even 15 for men. And then you would cut back down to what the weight is. But what's the point of doing that when you can pretty much stay shredded all year round and gradually put on muscle mass? It's better that way, especially now if you have a structured program, if you're peaking here to do a competition, then all this time should be building mass, building the foundation, which is what quarantine is about. So when it comes to your calories, I wrote a great article on this on my website. It's down below, that's it, Zach. It's called Calories Explained. So go check that out to kind of figure out how many calories you need if you don't want to do that because you're like, yo, Zach, fuck that, I don't want to read stuff, whatever, still suggest you guys go check that out. If not, here's a simple thing. You're going to take your weight, you're going to multiply it by 10, okay? Me, for example, I'm 212 times 10, 2,120 calories, okay? When I do my morning cardio every single day, we add in another 200 to 400 calories, right? Depending if I was walking or biking or whatever, it is. and if I was doing it for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, okay? If you walk for an hour, you're looking about like, 300 calories. If you ran for an hour, you look for about 600 calories. So you play with that number. You add it to your weight. So 2,120. Let's say I did a 30 minute run. I'm going to add 400 calories to that, which puts me at 2,520 calories. Then during the day, I either do boxing or I either do a weightlifting session. If I do a weightlifting session, it usually lasts anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes. Sorry. During that time, if it was 30 minutes, I'm looking at two to 300 calories burnt. If I was looking at more than 60 minutes, I'm looking at more 400, 500 calories burnt. So let's say we'll go sweet in the middle, we'll go 300 calories. I add that to the number I was at before, that puts me at 2,800 calories, 20, 28, 2,900 calories. So for that day, pretty much means I, I burnt that many calories. If I want to stay at maintenance, I'm gonna eat that many calories. If I wanna lose weight, I'm gonna eat just a little under. How fast you wanna do the progressive uh, weight loss is really gonna depend on you. The majority suggest that you can do roughly 0.5 to 1% of your body weight, and that would be the goal. So uh, you're looking at anywhere between like 0.5 to one pound a week, and you're looking at like four pounds in the month, and you could maybe even go up to two pounds in the week, and that's like really heavy. You're looking at a deficit of roughly a thousand calories a day. But you guys pick. So you either eat at maintenance or you cut, get down to the body fat you want, and then stay there and do that type of food eating. Another big tip that I wrote in the article, that's what I'm telling you guys to read it. If not, you're just gonna stand here, listen to me talk about it, is if you're gonna do these cut, if you're choosing to cut, then what you're gonna wanna do is do three weeks of a cut and then do one to about, say about 10 days of maintenance calories. And this is just to get your body adapted to the new weight that you're at. So a lot of the times people do a weight cut for six to eight to 10 weeks, and then they're metabolically like all over the place and their body's like, uh -uh, we're going back up to what we liked before. So you're establishing the new baseline for your body to be like, look, this is okay, we're good with that. So that's what I would suggest. And yeah, those are all the notes on what, how to program during quarantine, what to do, bulk, gain, anything like that, how to periodize your program. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I'm gonna be coming out with a jujitsu and wrestler specific one, and then a combative athlete one where weekend warriors can fall into this as well. So stay tuned for that video. If not, that's it for the video, guys. It's your boy, that's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee, under the table. Peace.